to turn it over now to ABC4's Nick McGurk. It looks like he's live at the Utah State Capitol. Nick, what's going on up there? Well, right now you're hearing folks being told to leave. Uh, there's a handful of folks left here at the state capitol. I want to put everything into perspective for you. Tonight, Salt Lake City joining a list of major American cities with the National Guard moving in and a curfew in place. The curfew has been in place here for a couple of hours. Uh, still, a few folks have not quite left. There's vandalism on surrounding benches and surrounding stone. But I want to give you some perspective. I'm from Salt Lake, but I've reported all over the country, including in Seattle, where they have so many protests covering major protests there uh, over the course of a couple of years. Burning cars were a rarity. We've seen two cars burn today. And in Seattle, they haven't had the National Guard uh, called in for more than 20 years. So this is a very significant night uh, in Utah, in Salt Lake City. And we can take a live look. Dozens, if not at least 100 state troopers are here on the steps of the state capitol. It is symbolic, but it's also real. There were far more protesters here earlier tonight. Again, a lot of vandalism, a lot of protesting happening here. So far, the curfew has not been enforced, as far as we can tell. Uh, about a dozen folks left, some members of the media. Uh, but this has been quite the night. Jason Wynn has been painting the picture for us so vividly on the streets of Salt Lake. Uh, Rosie, it's hard to know what to make of tonight, but it is happening all over the country. And now this kind of protesting has come to Salt Lake. Back to you. Nick, thank you so much for heading out there with boots on the ground to just recap everything that's happening out there. I agree with you. I worked in Oregon, where right next to Washington State, where Seattle is, and out there, lots of protests and demonstrations as well. I agree with you. To see a situation like how it unfolded in Utah tonight is very historic and something we haven't seen for a long time. Uh, I am receiving word now that we have Utah Representative Chris Stewart on the phone. Representative Stewart, can you hear me? I do. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, you uh, tweeted here earlier, it's a uniquely American right to peacefully gather and petition the government. However, rioting is not protesting. With how the situation has unfolded in our state's capital today, what's your take on it? Well, it's much like we tried to express in a tweet. Peaceful protesting is as American as apple pie. And it's part of our history, and frankly, it's, it's part of the way that we've been able to accomplish some very positive things. I mean, my heavens, Martin Luther King surely showed us that. He changed the world through peaceful protest. And, and I understand people's anger. I think all of us do. You can't watch that video of Mr. Floyd without being sickened and absolutely distressed by it. But if you're threatening businesses, if you're burning police cars, if you're smashing windows, that's not the solution. And I hope that I hope that uh, people see that. And, and honestly, I think the vast majority of people do, especially here in Salt Lake. Um, I, I think the vast majority of people here in Salt Lake City understand that, uh, you know, burning and smashing is not the answer. Yeah, Representative Stewart, I don't know if you're familiar, but uh, yesterday we talked to the organizer of Black Lives Matter Utah. She's been doing uh, this work for about six years. Uh, she says that during her time organizing, uh, being with families uh, who have died uh, during incidents with police, she now thinks that the best thing to do is to draft a bill on some sort of police reform. So she's gathered a petition, she's drafted a bill together. Um, I, I wanted to ask, do, do, do you think it's possible at all for us to see something um, up on Capitol Hill as far as legislation goes? No, I actually do. And, and there are people from all, all, all across the spectrum who I think there, there are some, some concerns that are shared. I think sometimes uh, police forces have been militarized to a point that makes many of us uncomfortable. The fact that there's not, uh, there's not standardized training, uh, you see some of these incidences, <clears throat> for example, some we've seen recently where they insist that the person who's being apprehended back up towards them <clears throat> versus subduing them and laying on the ground and and uh, you know we've and we've seen incidences where that leads to actual violence and death. I, I think there could be some standards that could be applied. There are things that we could agree on again across the spectrum of your of your political be beliefs. Uh, but I also think we can agree on this: what we've seen in Minneapolis is heartbreaking. It doesn't help. Uh, a, a little bit of what we've seen in Salt Lake tonight doesn't help. Protest 
bring your uh, bring your concerns forward. Let's talk about it like this this organizer you mentioned. She's been working at this for six years. Well, good for her. She's working and she's not giving up. That's the kind of thing we need is for people to be persistent, try to achieve a goal that we can all agree on, but let's not uh, incite violence. Let's not hurt people along the way. Rep Stewart, I don't know if you uh, can see what we're seeing right now on our TV screen. We have a live look at the Utah State Capitol where our Utah Highway Patrol troopers, they're actually making arrests uh, on several protesters that have been there tonight, that have not left. What do you hope happens? What do you hope they do? When you say they, you mean the police or the protesters? On both sides. What do you hope happens on both sides? Well, once again, the police have a responsibility to defuse this, and, and it's very clear that that has to take place, or if not, then it's potential that we see uh, you know, much more violent, much more disruptive activity like we saw in Minneapolis and some of the other cities. The governor has imposed a curfew that is supported by the mayor, and they have a responsibility, as I said, to try to defuse this. The protesters, on the other hand, have a responsibility, and I think a right to do two things continue to find ways to have their voices be heard, but to do it in an appropriate manner, to do it in a way that doesn't threaten people, do it in a way that doesn't, uh, you know, take away from the effort that they're actually trying to achieve. Because many people watch some of this activity and it doesn't help them. It doesn't convince them to their cause. It does exactly the opposite. And, uh, and once again, protesting American process is something we support, but you got to do it in the right way. I agree with you there. My last question for you is, what's your message to these demonstrators, and how do we move forward from here? Well, I think we've talked about some of that already here. I mean, the message to the demonstrators is, once again, every, I, I don't know a single American who doesn't feel much the same way that they do. They are not alone in their frustration and in their anger. The way to do that is to work together and to, and to uh, as we've talked about, implement some reforms as necessary, perhaps uh, modify some training as necessary, to talk with one another, but you don't burn things down, you don't uh, threaten police, you don't write things like they did on the Capitol, all police are bad. I mean, uh, those kind of things don't convince anyone that your cause is just or right. Representative Stewart, we appreciate your time so much tonight. I know you're busy. Thank you for being with us. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. And as you see out there, a live look at the Utah State Capitol. Let's head back out, check in with ABC4's Nick McGurk. Oh, it looks like we're having some technical difficulties. As soon as we can get that back up, we'll check back in to tell you guys what was happening up there. You saw Utah Highway Patrol troopers making some arrests on Capitol Hill. Now we're taking a look at downtown Salt Lake City. That's where our ABC4's Jason yeah, Wynn has I, been. How has the situation been developing, Jason? Reset uh, his microphone and everything. You can hear now they are making the announcement. This is an unlawful assembly and they will make arrests. Uh, this is the warning right now uh, that law enforcement will be moving forward. You can see they're moving forward right now. These trucks are moving forward and they're screaming. This is an unlawful cere uh, ceremony uh, in protest. Uh, you can see that now they are, they are on their blow horns. They are warning these protesters to disperse. Uh, if not, they're going to make arrests. Now, John, come over here with me here. I want to swing right around. We're going to make a big loop here. Uh, and, and I want you to see this here. They brought in a second bus. Uh, they brought in a second bus to help deal with this crowd. Uh, and as they make these detainees, or they, as they detain people and as they arrest people, those are the buses, those are the places, those folks will be going. We know there's at least one person that's in that bus right now and has been in there for a little while. But right over here, you can see right behind us, uh, this armored vehicle is now moving forward. There are people that are on that armored vehicle. Uh, you can see law enforcement has a line that's at least five or six rows deep. Uh, they have moved the armored trucks forward and have been saying this is an unlawful assembly. Uh, please disperse. They're giving this crowd a time to move. Uh, and we heard Rosie Rivera say it earlier. At some point, they're going to make arrests. They're going to disperse this crowd. And this may be what we are seeing right now uh, as we're moving past 
600 south and 200 east. Uh, we are downwind uh, from anything, if anything does happen, uh, but you can definitely tell that law enforcement, they've got a line right there at 200 east, all the way over uh, past 600 south here. Uh, the crowd has a couple of options. They can keep going south on 200 east, or they can head uh, towards State Street, but that's pretty much what we're seeing right now. And as soon as something else happens, we're going to bring it to you live. I'm Jason Wynn, downtown Salt Lake City, ABC4 News. That just gives you perspective on how many people could probably be detained tonight with those two so buses. We'd like to go back out. This is Utah State Capitol. There's, there's preservation of state property that comes into that. Um, there's life and safety. All of those are being evaluated. Um, obviously, this is a, a very large event involved a lot of agencies. There was a lot of coordination went on that. Um, and we're at the point now we're in compliance with all of the decisions that were made. The decision. All right, it looks like we're having some technical difficulties there. Just to wrap up, that was a Utah Highway Patrol trooper up at the Utah State Capitol. They just made some arrests up there, as we saw earlier uh, during the newscast. Uh, there were several protesters who just didn't comply with orders. We know that earlier at 8 o'clock, Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall issued an order for everyone to go home and leave the public areas of Salt Lake City. This was to ensure safety. Um, protesters and demonstrators were also ordered to leave the scene. But as you can see there, we still have hundreds of people in downtown Salt Lake City. Uh, let's head back out to the Utah State Capitol. ABC 4's Nick McGurk is out there. Could he tell us, uh, break down, help us understand what just transpired out there? Well, right now we're talking to the Utah Highway Patrol Colonel about what happened, but we saw a handful of protesters who would not leave. Two hours after the curfew went into effect, I want to show you uh, what is left here of the Highway Patrol, the police presence here. Uh, they were in much greater number here, and there were a dozen or so protesters who refused to leave. We did talk to one as she was arrested. I said, why are you doing this? And she said, because we don't want something like this to happen again. Colonel, I wonder if you could just touch on what we witnessed out here two hours after curfew as sure. you made some arrests. Um, what you witnessed was that you know, the curfew went into effect at 8 o'clock. We're after 10 o'clock now. We're on Capitol grounds. Um, we were very deliberate and gave one hour worth of repeated warning that the curfew in Salt Lake City was going to be enforced and that this gathering we needed to, everyone needed to disperse. Um, after giving that warning for one hour, our officers moved down, informed most of the crowd that, that we were here to enforce that curfew and to enforce the order to disperse. Uh, most of the people left without incident. A few chose not to. They were taken into custody without incident. Any idea how many were arrested? I don't have that in number right now. What's the importance of protecting the state capitol? The epicenter of these protests appears to have been uh, downtown, but uh, you know the number of, of troopers we saw here was significant. Sure. Um, well, the, the troopers you had here, obviously, um, we were trying to be appropriate in their presence. Um, we had actually two crowds that showed up here today at different times. The first crowd was really large. Um, looked at it from a First Amendment type perspective. A lot of them were just having their voice heard, which we see that quite often at the Capitol. After that crowd dispersed, we actually notified that there had been a lot of damage to the Capitol grounds. A lot of graffiti on the granite, on the staircases. Um, as we came down here, there were some that remained. We continued to see that. Um, we decided we were going to not allow that to continue to happen and have damage happen to the Capitol. We put our troopers in place. They held that until the decision was made to issue a curfew order. After the curfew order was issued, then they were notified for one hour um, repeatedly that, the, that this was now an unlawful gathering because of that order, and then that was enforced. What sort of coordination do you have with the Utah National Guard as far as what they're going to do? Um, they're assisting law enforcement as they need to. So there are some of those that have come in. Um, that's under the direction of the governor's office. That's a decision that's been made um, in coordination with a lot, of, a lot of different perspectives, but they will be assisting where they're needed. There's no doubt this is unprecedented here in Salt Lake. Do you have a general reaction to what we witnessed today? Um, disappointment and frustration, obviously. Um, I think our officers conducted themselves extremely well. Um, they were respectful of other people's rights. They're being confronted with a lot of very tough situations. Um, they, were, they continue to be respectful of those rights. We continue to be respectful of people who just wanted to have their voice heard. But at the same time, there, there were people who were using this as an opportunity to, to uh, to engage in illegal activity. Any troopers injured? Um, not that I'm aware of, no. Thanks for your time, Colonel. Thank you. All right. Uh, live from the Capitol, hearing from the Colonel of Utah Highway Patrol about the arrest just being made uh, after a very large gathering here, a lot of graffiti and vandalism.
uh, and handful of arrests. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Nick, for that wrap up. We're understanding it's a very tough situation out there for our Utah High Patrol troopers. Let's check back in with ABC4's Jason Wynn. He's down at the epicenter of all this demonstration in downtown Salt Lake City. Jason. Rosie, we just seen several people detained, taken to these buses right over here. There's another person right here that John can move over to. You can see this person was right in the middle of the road. Uh, there's a couple of people right over here that are now being put into the bus. Uh, this is where these folks are being detained. Uh, there are two buses down here, uh, so you can see that there are uh, at least three people that have been loaded on that bus. We've seen three others that were walked down towards the other bus. Uh, these are folks that are now being patted down. What I can also tell you as John starts to turn around here is that the, the law enforcement has moved down uh, further down towards 700 South. Take a look over here. They're making more detain. Uh, they're detaining more people right now. Uh, we're going to walk up a little bit closer so that we can show you exactly what is happening. Law enforcement said this was going to happen. Uh, Sheriff Rosie Rivera said this was going to happen, uh, and now it is. Uh, law enforcement is arresting people. They're moving the line. They're pushing. You see that right over here. Uh, you can see that law enforcement is detaining folks here, uh, and they're taking people in. Uh, we're going to move a little bit closer here, John. Uh, follow me here. Sorry, this is live TV here uh, that we're documenting here. Uh, but you can see several people are on the ground. Several people have been detained. Uh, law enforcement has moved in. Take a look around. Uh, John's moving in on a young man right now. Uh, there's three people on the ground right here all being detained. Here's another uh, man right here that's being detained as John move over here. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, 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 hey. Well, relax, relax. Hey, relax. hey well, why are you here? Why are you here, sir? Um, so this is the things that we're showing you right now. We're going to move over here. John, come over here. Step towards towards our right here. Uh, and let's show some more of this here. Uh, this man has a shield that's in front of his face to protect him from anybody in the crowd. Uh, he has also been detained. Uh, John's going to pan over to the left here. We're going to stop right now uh, just to show you several more people have been detained. I mean, this is what Rosie Rivera was saying she didn't want to see happen. Uh, and it is happening. Uh, several people right now are being detained and are about to be loaded on a bus. Uh, the police line is back in its back form uh, right in front of 700 South. Uh, we're right in front of a health care building, uh, and I can tell you that there are a number of SWAT teams that are here uh, in the crowd. It's still here, too. Uh, you can see as John starts to move towards this crowd, uh, you can see that there are more people uh, right by 700 South here. Uh, you can see the other media that are here. Uh, you can see uh, this officer right now is taking a breath. Uh, he's, he's got a knee down there. Uh, we don't know if he is injured or not. Uh, there are some other people being detained over here towards my left. Let's go over there, John. Let's see what's happening over here. Uh, we're going to go over here by these stairs uh, so that we can see this. Ah, here we go. There is uh, another female that's being uh, detained. You can see two kids. Let's just stay right here, John. So we, and you can see several people on this sidewalk here. A lot of young folks uh, being detained right now. We don't know if they're juveniles. We don't know if they're teenagers. Uh, but we do know is, is that they're being detained. They're all going to be loaded on a bus for the night. Uh, and we don't know if they're going to be arrested. A lot of times earlier, Police allowed a lot of these folks to leave, but now that we're in a curfew uh, and they've got two buses down here, a lot of these folks are going to be detained uh, and put on the bus. So uh, this is one of the things that we uh, were told to expect, one of the things we were expecting. And you can see right now these people, uh, this person's obviously from Harriman, uh, now being moved towards that bus. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six people now being moved towards that bus. Uh, here it goes seven, eight, nine, and ten. You're going to see them all pass our camera right now. Uh, you can see some of them uh, have those uh, plastic handcuffs on them right now. Uh, some people have actually had the metal handcuffs, uh, but you can see right now these folks are being detained. Uh, and, and this line is continuing to move. Uh, John, just come over here with me here. Uh, we can see right over here, this line is still t intact. They're holding the line right now, and they're, they're moving that forward, uh, and, and they're going to continue to move forward. From what I can tell uh, in my 2020 vision is that there's another crowd right here on the 700 South and 200 East. Uh, it's not a large crowd, but it uh, does seem 
like there is a large amount of people uh, that are down here. And now law enforcement is moving that line again. We're move right down towards 700 South. We told you this all day. That line, they don't let people go past that line, but they will move that line up. And right now, uh, to uh, disperse this crowd, they're moving that line up. And it appears that this line uh, is going to meet uh, the rest of this crowd right there off of 700 south here in 200 east. Um, so this is live TV. Just so you know, uh, we're going to send things back over to um, the station right now uh, as we move forward. Or, I'm sorry, we're gonna, I'm going to send things over to Nicole Newman right now as we continue to move forward. Guys, we are on the move right now. As you can see, uh, police are moving in. We are on the block of 700 south and 200 east. Literally three blocks down from where this initially started. We've got police moving in from We've got police moving in from each side here. As they continue to push protesters back up. Actually though right now I'm not very I'm not seeing very many protesters in this area. The ones that are left it may be a couple dozen are on the opposite side of the street right now, but a very powerful scene right here. As you can see, countless police with their shields pushing protesters, dispersing this crowd. Again, we are at 700 South and 200 East, three blocks away from where this initially started hours ago, as police continue to try to disperse this crowd. Guys. Nicole, I don't know if you can hear me, if you're still there. Could you give us an idea of how many people are out there right now? Right now, what I would say is um, from what we're seeing, it's on the opposite side of the street. So on the opposite side of um, this intersection, what I can see from where we are right now, it may be a matter of dozens of people that are out there. And as you can see, there are people that are coming by that are recording with their phones as well as honking the horn, something that we've seen throughout the course of the afternoon and the evening as people even in their cars try to join in on this protest. But that's what we're seeing right now. It's more police out here, police officers, than there are protesters right okay, now that's, from what we can see. That's good news at least. So that way, like police are there not outnumbered. They can still manage the crowds. Uh, it looks like traffic is just going through really slow right there because of the demonstrators, the law enforcement, but also because they're just stopping to take video. And it really is kind of counteractive to this curfew uh, that has been issued by Salt Lake City Mayor. Thank you so much, Nicole Newman there on the ground for us. It just feels like um, it's going to be uh, a long night for everybody involved. Uh, you're looking now at ABC 4's Jason Wynn. Jason, can you hear us? You're on the, just, just tell us where you are in relative to Nicole. Well, Nicole's on the other side of things. Nicole, if we, John, can we show uh, the, she's with the other media that's on uh, right there off of 200 East. Uh, they've kind of circled over there. Uh, as you can see, as John starts to pan out, you can see some of the media is out here, but uh, most of the crowd, like Nicole said, uh, is right there on that southwest side. Uh, there's at least a couple dozen more people. Uh, media is moving over there too. Uh, the, the folks that aren't with me and that are standing right behind this police line here uh, that is very, very deep here. Uh, what I can tell you is that 200 South is blocked off nobody's heading east uh, and that uh, the police line uh, continues to move southbound on 200 east uh, it seems that a lot of the law enforcement has moved into the neighborhood has moved here uh, where we have seen dozens of people taken to the bus you've seen the bus we've talked about the bus dozens of people have been detained taken to the bus we know of at least one arrest if not more uh, you also know about the man that came down with the bow and arrow uh, law enforcement is looking into him right now uh, this intersection for the most part is clear uh, and at any point now this law enforcement group will move forward again and they will take over this intersection like they have been taking over every intersection uh, as 
the protesters continue to move south. But those protesters uh, are over there closer towards 800 south now. And it just seems to be that uh, they're staring at law enforcement to see when law enforcement will make a move. Uh, and then everybody backs up further south down uh, towards uh, 800 south here. Uh, and so this has been the case for a little while now. Um, you know, I'm not sure if law enforcement is going to continue to move forward and detain the rest of these folks. Uh, you know, and Nicole is right there by a lot of those folks. So is our photographer, Josh Witzel, uh, you know, and they're trying to take care of themselves and be as safe as they possibly can as we all record and document what is happening in downtown Salt Lake City. So many businesses destroyed uh, or have been injured. Uh, we're now seeing where Nicole is. I can tell you that she is on the uh, east side of the street. Uh, I can tell you that she is okay uh, and it does not seem to have a group of people around her. Uh, so she is being safe as she could possibly can be with her photographer, Josh Witzel. Uh, we are now hearing another announcement. Uh, so we believe that law enforcement will be moving forward here again. Uh, you can hear a crowd yelling, no justice, no peace. Uh, you know, right here from this Salt Lake City uh, rescue armored vehicle, you can hear people yelling, or you can hear that loud box saying, uh, this is an unlawful assembly, please disperse. Uh, now law enforcement, they're moving back. Uh, some of the law enforcement is moving back. It looks like uh, those, they're re- uh, positioning themselves. This law, group of law enforcement may be going back to get a drink uh, and get recuperated as this group uh, stays here and holds the line. And right there in the middle, right there uh, on this line right here is Salt Lake City Police and they haven't been moving and they've been moving forward. So Rosie, you know, as law enforcement steps back and regroups, we might be at that spot where the crowd has dive, uh, has been able to uh, disperse enough where law enforcement may be comfortable right now uh, with what is happening here on the ground. We're going to continue to watch this, Rosie, and bring you the latest because we're going to be here a little while longer. I'm Jason Wynn in downtown Salt Lake City, ABC4 News. All right, thank you, Jason. Doesn't look like this situation is going to end anytime soon. Uh, let's go back to the other side of those demonstrations. ABC4's Nicole Newman has eyes on just down the street from where Jason is. Nicole, can you hear us? Yes, Rosie, we can hear you. And as Jason mentioned, uh, some of the police officers, obviously the ones that were across 700 South are starting to move back. Uh, we do still have some officers blocking off 200 East, but it appears that some of the officers there are starting to move as well. Now we want to show you just to give you a perspective. You asked earlier about the number of protesters that were out here. You can see just in front of the Utah Department of Workforce Services. This is the bulk of what we have right now that are out here. And if we go, if we can, a little bit further down the street, you see that there are people standing in the middle of the street. These are the protesters that we're seeing that are still out here kind of lingering behind. We do know we're hours past the curfew that officials have put in place. And these were the protesters that officers were trying to push back. Uh, still a line over here, if we can pan back over to this area, we do still have police officers standing on guard. And again, where we are, again, this is 700 South in the intersection of 200 East. So officers on both sides, making sure to push protesters back. But as we just showed you, that's the bulk of the protesters that we're seeing out here right now. Rosie? All right, thank you, Nicole. Eyes on the ground there near 400 South, 200 East. We just received word that the National Guard has arrived. We'd like to check back in with ABC4's Nick McGurk. He's up at the Utah State Capitol monitoring the situation where we saw Utah uh, Highway Patrol troopers just arrest some protesters. Nick. Rosie, we know 200 members of the Utah National Guard have been deployed. We spoke with the colonel of the Highway Patrol who said they're working in coordination with the National Guard on their efforts tonight. Uh, there was a handful of protesters here at the Capitol who didn't leave. And two hours after the curfew went into effect, those handful of protesters were arrested. And I can tell you when the sun rises tomorrow in Salt Lake City, the facade of our state capitol is going to look a whole lot different. We're not going to dignify the graffiti that we see behind us, but all of this with graffiti and vandalism 
uh, sure looks a whole lot different. I want to show you Highway Patrol here. They will stand guard all night. But again, a calm night here at the state capitol. Protesters have been dispersed as a historic day continues. Rosie. All right. Thank you, Nick. We were just talking about earlier how all of the events that we've seen tonight is historic. It's something we haven't seen for years. Uh, we'd like to head back out to the epicenter of all this. ABC 4's Jason Wynn, what are you seeing now? Hey, Rosie, uh, right now what we can see here is a lot of law enforcement moved back. Uh, they're recuperating. Uh, you can see that there is still a line here, right here off of uh, 700 South and 200 East. As John starts to pan over here, there's another line right here uh, blocking uh, anyone from heading eastbound right now. And traffic is being pushed southbound, uh, as you can see right here on 700 South. Now, that group uh, of people that Nicole was talking about, what we've been keeping an eye on, is right there in front of the Workforce Services Building. Uh, they, it just seems like they're just yelling at folks, yelling obscenities right now, uh, but uh, the massive crowd that we were looking at earlier uh, has, for the most part, dispersed. We don't know if these are vehicles from that group, uh, but we can tell you that there have been dozens and dozens of people that have been detained uh, and put into buses that are about a block uh, just north of where we are right now. But uh, law enforcement, uh, they're holding the line right now, uh, and we're hearing the National Guard is here. We don't know if they're going to be moving in on this group of protesters or not. But what we do know is that law enforcement is sticking put, and they're holding their line right here at 700 South and 200 East. We're going to continue to monitor this, and we'll bring you the latest as soon as we can. Rosie? All right. Thank you so much, Jason. We know that uh, it's going to be a long night for all crews who are out there. What it's probably going to look like tomorrow is uh, a long road to clean up. We know there's been tons of vandalism, tons of graffiti that's happened starting at the Salt Lake City Public Library all the way up to the Utah State Capitol. Uh, turning back to on the other side of where Jason was at the epicenter is ABC 4's Nicole Newman. Nicole, what does it look like where you are? Well, what we've seen again is more police officers dispersed. We do see this armored vehicle from West Valley City um, coming through. Uh, this is 700 South right now. This is where um, officers were forming a line blocking the intersection. Now there is a vehicle there and it appears that they're picking up some of the officers. So again, officers starting to clear out some, but there is still some here that are remaining at this intersection to make sure that protesters don't move back up the area. Uh, just within the last time that um, you guys were here, uh, some more of the protesters do seem to have dispersed. The majority hanging out right here in front of the Utah Department of Workforce Services building as we see the police helicopter fly over this particular area where we are right now. So as it appears, Rosie, it does seem that things are starting to dwindle down much more than what they previously were even just 15 to 20 minutes ago. Rosie. Nicole, thank you. Um, quick question for you. Please stay on the line with us here. Have you seen anyone from the National Guard from where you're at? No, no, we haven't. Not where we are. We have not seen anyone from the National Guard. Okay. Um, just a couple things that I wanted to recap with you. Um, you've been um, out on the ground there. Uh, we're going to head back out to where ABC 4 is Jason Wynn is. Jason, um, have you seen anyone from the National Guard out from where you are? Yeah, Rosie, take a look right behind me. Here's the armored trucks. Uh, there are uh, about a half a dozen of them right here off of 200 East. Uh, the National Guard has moved in. Uh, this must be why law enforcement pulled back so that they could get some sort of break. Uh, and at any point in time right now, we can expect the people that were in these vehicles uh, to go ahead and take that police line. Uh, but these Humvees right behind me, uh, they are armored. Uh, they are here. Uh, we have not seen 
the actual National Guard personnel. We are walking backwards right now towards where we were originally over here off of 600 South. And as my photographer keeps looking, uh, showing you all these different type of military vehicles that are now on the streets of downtown Salt Lake City. Uh, as you are taking a look at this, this is an image not many people wanted to see downtown Salt Lake City. And uh, there are a good number of Humvees that are here. Now, as my photographer uh, starts to pan over to his right, you can see that large group of law enforcement. They're over there uh, regrouping right now in front of those two buses. Those two buses are where dozens of people have been brought in who have been detained. We don't know if they've been arrested. We don't know if they are going to be arrested, but we know they have been detained uh, and they look like they're patting some folks down here. So uh, I'm going to walk over here by these folks. Uh, just to tell you exactly what's going on because this is obviously something that we need to talk about. Here is the National Guard right here uh, walking by us, John. Right here is the National Guard. So you can take a look right there. The National Guard is moving in with uh, the police uh, protective gear. Uh, those are soldiers that are on the street. And as we turn over here, John, turn around. Please come with me. Uh, John, stay right there, uh, please. Uh, as I send this back to the station, guys, I want you to know that right there, that is the National Guard, the Utah National Guard down here in downtown Salt Lake City. I'm Jason Wynn, live downtown, ABC4 News. All right, thank you. Uh, ABC4 is Jason Wynn, ABC4 is Nicole Newman, Haley Hendricks, Nick Begurk, just boots on the ground covering uh, this protest for us uh, all night. Uh, we know that this protest turned violent beginning at 2 o'clock uh, this evening. Um, curfew, we just want to remind you guys that uh, curfew Am was implemented it? at 8 p.m. This evening by Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall, it will go through 6 a.m. Monday. We've had multiple police agencies responding to the scene. We've seen SWAT team. We've seen the National Guard. Utah Transit Authority announced that all track services in the area has been halted. Cleanup will be long. Uh, we just want to send it back out for one last look with Nick McGurk. Nick. Rosie, we just wanted to recap. Two vehicles burned today, including a police vehicle. Dozens of protesters detained, countless incidents of vandalism, Salt Lake City Police, the facade here of the state capitol. We have the National Guard deployed, and there's a curfew until 6 a.m. Monday. Thank you for watching our coverage. Have a good night.